Neil, I, I want to begin with you as the appellate uh, expert here, and I would not presume to uh, focus you with the question. I just want to have us all listen to your reaction to what you think are the important points of this opinion. Well, I think that we could very well, Lawrence, be looking at the very last words about Trump's claim about absolute immunity from criminal prosecution. And we could be looking at words that will likely force Donald Trump to go to a criminal trial for the January 6th insurrection and, most importantly, to have that trial before the presidential election, which makes a lot of sense because the American people deserve to know exactly what happened on that day. And to me, like, this decision shows our legal system at its best. You got three judges with dramatically different political views, dramatically different judicial philosophies. They come together. They produce this brilliant, methodical, timely opinion. It's a model of good judging. I've always felt there's a difference between law and politics. Judge Henderson is on this case. She's a very conservative jurist. She voted against Donald Trump just as much as the other two judges. And it reminds me of, like, you know, kind of those historic votes that are cast. I remember Jeffrey Sutton, who was up for on the short list for the Supreme Court, very conservative ju judge, upholds President Obama's Affordable Care Act, uh, the first judge to, you know, so-called cross party lines. This is what it's about. I mean, no presidential get out of jail free card in our Constitution. This is the essence of what American democracy is. And I do not think, and we can talk about this more later, I don't think the Supreme Court's going to touch this with a 10-foot pole. Uh, Neil, uh, talk about it right now in terms of what do you think the elements uh, of the opinion, uh, which ones carry the strength that will make uh, the Supreme Court feel the job is done, they don't need us? I think the most important piece is constitutional structure, just that our entire system is basically a rebellion against King George III and the idea that people can be above the law in our system. There's lots of small points that are made. Some of them are really good, like, you know, Donald Trump himself said in his second impeachment, his lawyers said, you know, don't impeach him because he can be criminally prosecuted. And now he's turning around and saying, oh, I can't be criminally prosecuted because I was a former president. There's lots of small things like that. But to me, the ultimate thing is Donald Trump is citizen Trump. That's the way the opinion ends. And that's like a fundamental principle in our Anglo-American system of government. No person's above the law. Everyone is treated equally. It's what the words on the top of the Supreme Court say, equal protection under law. And that's what this decision's all about. It's why I don't think the Supreme Court will take this case. Uh, Andrew, I have to say, in reading it, there's a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know about that congressman who <laughs> said this 200 years ago. I didn't really know the Marbury versus Madison linkage to any of this, so there it is. So there's a lot of illumination about historical detail but there's not a single surprise. There's nothing surprising about it at all. This is the country I thought I was living in. Yeah, so there's something incredibly affirming about this, but I think one of the reasons Neil and I and many, many others um, were not surprised by this is the claims that Donald Trump was making are completely unfounded. There, there's no precedent for them. This is one where everyone says, oh, Donald Trump is unprecedented. In a court of law, that's not very good. Um, you need to have precedent on your side. He didn't. I would like to focus on Donald Trump is fond of saying publicly and walking back his claim, I'm only going to be a dictator for a day. Mm -hmm. I didn't really mean it. It's only one day. Look at the decision in terms of what Donald Trump is saying. It's not one day. He is His claims, these are not abstract. He is saying, I am, as a, when I become president, he is saying, I am, should have the unbounded authority to commit crimes. I should not have the check of an electorate to remove me. Um, at, the quote from the, the court is, at bottom, former President Trump's stance would collapse our system of separated powers by placing the president beyond the reach of all three branches. That is a claim to the D.C. Circuit of being a dictator, that that is what he wants. This idea that it's, oh, I didn't really mean it, it's only for a day. No, he tried to get the D.C. Circuit 
to go along with that. Um, so, of course, that was going to be rejected. But to me is preposterous is that this is somebody who's actually a serious candidate to run for office when he's running on something that you now have a, a unanimous decision saying this is fundamentally, his view is fundamentally antithetical to the American system of, of justice.